Hello, YouTube. This is Augustus Lodge. And I have to make a shout out to Rose in my heart because uh, you know your true friends on YouTube when uh, they're. They tell you right up front, you seem ornery. And I. I have seen. I have been ornery lately. She's, uh. Let me know that I have to let my misanthropic tendencies slide a little bit. And it's warranted in this kind of world we're living in. Especially when I have to deal with. these people on YouTube. And this vlog is called Science the Suppressor. Okay? I'm gonna quit saying that. Anyway, uh, science has become an instrument of suppression. They like to suppress technology. And why do they do that? Because of their established position. If you look at the science world, most people in science are in academia or they're doing research. And to get that research, they need the funding grant. And usually the grant is already out there and they have to meet the goals of that grant with their research. And thus, science falls into worn tracks. It's been in worn tracks for some time now. If you can see uh, the amount of progress that's been made with technology over the years, it's been stagnating. And most of that is due to the whole uh, establishment of science the way it is now. They have, uh, to get anything published, you have to be within the accepted dogma of the science world. And they do this through something called peer review or cronyism. And that is, uh, you have to, uh, please these entrenched, tenured people in the science world that usually have done nothing in application. They've just uh, been regurgitating the same old stuff over and over again. You know what has something real to offer in the technology vein? Engineering. You see, engineering, they make knowledge work. That's what they do. Uh, they have uh, real-world applications for their knowledge. Science, by comparison, is just dry, regurgitated jargon. They're so uh, slaved to semantics, like taxonomic semantics. Uh, they protect themselves from innovators by smearing them, like Vilikovsky. Raymond Reif, Tesla, Anton B. Camp, and Willem Reich are just a few examples. And I'll leave them in the tags and you can look them up. There's videos on YouTube about those people already. And uh, the reason why they do this is because they can't let them, they've got to have this uh, esoteric way of speaking that separates them and protects them from people who are ready to expand, push the envelope of knowledge a little bit. Because limited to five senses, hmm, we're limited human beings. And then they limit themselves even more to protect themselves from knowledge that would turn all previous knowledge on its ear. And I'm telling you, it's out there. For example, they've got geologic time. Okay. Somewhere along the line, it ended up with Darwin and everything else. They said, well, of course, things that are deeper are more primitive. And things that are higher up are more advanced. It could be just due to displacement, you know. Uh, smaller organisms like protists and trilobites and little bugs and insects and whatever they tend to sink faster because there's less 
mass, uh, there's less mass there and, you know, they don't move through the till. Like, say, for instance, a glacier. Like, I live in Roseau County here. It's been glaciated many times. And I live in Roseau County right on the edge of Lake Agassiz that receded and came back and glaciers receded and came back and came back over and over again. They sent out a soil, there's significant agricultural activity in this county, and they sent out a soil survey to survey the soil in basic four horizons. They couldn't even do that. They blew their budget when they weren't even close to getting even started. So they called it off. There's uh, soil surveys for counties surrounding the agricultural community, Kitson, Marshall, Polk, Pennington. They all have soil surveys. Roseville County has none because uh, the strata doesn't follow the rules. So they said, too hard. I'm not going to get into this. I hope that you all just come up to this county and give it a good try. They should get, that would be something that the funding, but oh, that won't get any funding. No, no, no. It might, it might set the, something like geologic time on its ear. And who's to say that protists are a more sophisticated organism than a fish, a dog, or a human? I've seen protists in the microscope. They're sophisticated little critters. There's a lot going on there. Uh, they don't have the kind of organs that we have, but they get along just fine. Uh, this idea of global warming. Okay, they say, oh, plants, plants uh, use CO2. Hmm? And uh, they give off oxygen. Well, they use some of the oxygen too. They don't tell you the part that, oh yeah, they say the rainforests are dying because the trees are going away, which isn't true. There's the jungle will infringe on urban areas all the time. It's a tropical area that happens. This idea that they're clear cutting rainforests. Yeah, they clear cut some rainforests, but they're in remote areas. And once they, the spoils are taken away, they leave. And it can, sometimes it recovers just fine. Changes a little bit, but it recovers. Because, see, they don't tell you that plants use oxygen too. There's something called cellular respiration. They only use the CO2 to make sugar. They have to use that sugar for their cells to respire. And for the cells to respire, they need oxygen. Animals eat food to produce their glucose. Plants can produce their own but they still need the oxygen. So plants are always gonna, I mean, and they don't look at grasses. <laughs> a, a lawn can produce more oxygen than a standard trees in a one to 18 ratio, okay? 18 to one, grass to, to trees. They don't tell you that much. These people, these scientist people, and I know they're probably entrenched in academia and have funding grants and they want to follow the established dogma because science has become not unlike religion back in Galileo's day. They quash people like Raymond Reif. He made a telescope back in the day that rivals electron microscopes, an optical one. I don't see any of them, I don't even hear about it anymore. Because he cured cancer. Oh, that's wrong. Oh, you don't want to kill that kind of golden goose, do you? For the, all those uh, physicians. Well, I wouldn't call them physicians. They're doctors, medical doctors. Timeshares and yacht payments. I mean, couldn't do that. Really now. You know, it's just something to see because... Uh, they come back to me with semant taxonomic semantics like, oh, the coelacanth, the, the fossil one was a freshwater fish. It was only 30 centimeters long. And the ones they find now are saltwater fish, 150 centimeters long. And they have a different morphology. Yeah, they have a morphology. It's like a burbot and a cod. A burbot is pretty much a freshwater cod. And it does have different morphology because it lives in freshwater. Cod lives in saltwater. Tell you what, when you clean it out and cook the meat, taste the exactly the same 
See, they don't, they don't have the tangible knowledge of the real world, these scientists. And I wish they could come up with better names. I mean, they don't even have a mineral name. My, I'm Augustus Larch. That's something that sticks in your brain. They have a series of numbers and letters and a random arrangement. How can you remember that? They're not doing themselves a favor like that, are they now? But anyway, this has been my Science the Suppressor vlog. Thank you for watching you, Mr. Augustus Larch.